So last lecture we already told you that if we want to numerically simulate, uh, numerically solve PDEs with shockwaves, finite difference may not be a very good method because of the discontinuity. And instead, we, we can't even try to discretize the differential form of the equation. Instead, we should try to, dif uh, try to discretize the integral form of the equation, right? So if you have a partial differential equation like that, where you, for example, in oh, <laughs> OK, uh, let me see. The computer is stuck in traffic. Uh, how do I go back? All right. All right, OK, here you go. So I have a conservation law, du dt plus df du, uh, df dx is equal to 0 to start with. So u here is some conserved quantity, some density of the conserved quantity. For example, in the last example, uh, when we are stuck in traffic, u is the number of cars per unit length of the highway, for example. F is the flux, that is, uh, for example, how many cars per unit time is going to flow through a particular checkpoint, right? OK, so we have this equation, but we don't want to discretize it because, uh, uh, because df dx may not even exist around the discontinuity. So instead, we discretize the integral form integration over any interval a and b u dx is going to be plus f of u at okay so when i let me see when i integrate this over space what i'm going to get is f of u b minus f of u a is going to be equal to 0 this is the equation i want to discretize and this equation is true for any A and B, right? So finite volume scheme chooses the set of A and B for you. So if I have a x0, x1, and uh, xn, sorry, and uh, x1, x2, etc., xn minus 1, all the way, I have uh, n plus 1 points to discretize my domain. In contrary to finite difference method, where we want to discretize this using n plus 1 variables, subtract the boundary conditions, right? because we are storing the values at the grid points. But finite volume do not store the value at the grid points. It stores the average value over the intervals. So if I have a function like this, I'm going to be storing uh, the average value over the intervals or in other words if I know the length of the interval I'm storing the area below the function over each interval okay so this area I'm going to if this is the function u the area below each interval is going to be my uh, is going to be my u1 times delta x. The area into, uh, under the second interval is going to be my u2 times delta x, etc. And uh, over the last interval is going to be un times delta x. So here we have to agree on the convention about numbering. So different textbooks may do things differently. But here, Let's actually revise our scheme of numbering the grid points. Because we want to emphasize the fact that we are going to be storing the values in the interval, or the average value in the interval. So we want to downgrade the importance of these grid points. So instead of calling this x0, uh, for example, instead of calling this x1, we are going to call this x one and half because this is the grid point lies in between the first interval and the second interval, right? So it is actually not as an important uh, 
quantity because I never store the values here. And correspondingly, the first grid point is going to be x half. The second grid point is going to be x two and half. And uh, this is instead of n minus one, I have n minus half. And this is n plus half. Okay. So let's agree on this convention that the integers always denote the intervals, and the fraction, like the half points, always denote the interface. All right. Okay. So these are the values I store on my computer, which is actually equal to the integral from x half to x1 plus half of u dx. Or my definition of ui is defined as the integral of xi minus half to xi plus half u dx divided by delta x. And uh, in general, I don't, in finite volume, there is no difficulty at all to make each volume to have a different size. Uh, unlike finite difference, where if you, have, if you have grids of different size, it's very tedious because for every different spacing, you have to redo the Taylor series analysis and rederive what should be the weights of my finite difference operator. In finite volume, I just need to know the size of the interval i and uh, define my ui to be 1 over that delta xi times the integral. You are going to see that there is no difficulty in, uh, in varying the size of these points. So this is delta x1, this is delta x2, this is delta xn. Okay, so here's the definition of what I store in the computer, the volume averages. The volume averages are very closely linked to the integral form of the governing equation because if I divide both sides by uh, one, uh, divide both sides by delta x i and uh, choose my a to be x i minus half and b to be x i plus half, right? Then what I get is d dt of u i which is equal to, by definition, 1 over delta xi times d dt of xi minus half, xi plus half of u dx, right? And this quantity is what appears in the integral form of the governing equation. I just choose A equal to the lower bound and B equal to the upper bound, and this is going to be equal to F of U at the lower bound, which is the influx, minus F of U at the upper bound, which is the outflux. Right? So, the time derivative of the quantity I store on the computer can be expressed algebraically. The only difficulty I have here is that I don't know the values of u x i minus half. I also don't know the values of u of x i uh, i plus half. Right? I only have remember I only have the cell average values, and here now I require the point values. So the whole the whole technique of finite volume scheme, right? So finite volume scheme is two parts. One part is this equation. For any finite volume scheme, we stick to this equation. I mean, this equation is universal for any finite volume schemes. And two, which varies for different finite volume schemes, are what's called the flux reconstruction. That is approximate f of u at a particular interface, for example x i minus half. Approximate it as a certain function of u i minus 1 and u i uh, and u i. And potentially, I mean this is the simplest uh, finite volume scheme is you construct a reconstruct the flux 
at a particular interface, for example this one, using the volume average on the left and volume average on the right. More advanced schemes may look further, right? I want to use the value here, the value here, to reconstruct uh, the flux at a particular interface. So flux reconstruction is using the values of cell averages to approximate the value of the flux at the interface. Once I have these two ingredients, one is the integral form of the governing equation applied onto each small control volume, and two is I'm able to reconstruct the flux at the boundary of the control volume, then I have a finite volume scheme that I can program in the computer. 